here wants to get up and do the Madison? <laughs> I think I think Fanon should give lessons at every screening. <laughs> um, as a, a local cinephile that I recognize leaned into me after the film had just finished, he said, "What a wonderful film!" Mm -hmm. and I like it. Romance, a comedy, a mystery. Yes, everything for the same price. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want you to share with the audience something that the, this film premiered at the Toronto Film Festival. It's already had its release in Quebec. And if you wanted to share with me what the uh, programmer had said to you when it screened in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I cannot remember exactly the words, but you said it's the best romantic comedy, ecological thriller, <laughs> and a, a few other words. You know, I was the only one in the category, obviously. <laughs> and, and, and hard to box into, uh, right. you know, the tight little things that we want to say things are. Right, yes. So, I don't know. Do you have any questions? Yes. I just have a comment. It's the loudest and longest applause I've heard in the past week or so of going two or three times a day and I, it was a delight to see something that's kind of uplifting instead of being educated through docudramas about all the sad and depressing things that go on wow. in the world. And you also had a message in your film, so congratulations, I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, obviously, I, I, it was important to me that it be a feel-good movie because I was really in despair when I wrote it and <laughs> I really needed like to be lifted by my own writing because all my p previous projects have fallen short and I was out of pure survival that I started writing this out of all the procrastination on the internet that I did over the years that <laughs> gave me all that you know information and so but I really needed it to be uh, to be uplifting and to be yeah to give some hope because I couldn't see much at the time. <laughs> yes? I just wanted to ask, because it is such a well-crafted film, I'm a screenwriter as well, and it's so well-crafted yet so timely. So I'm curious your, your development time, like how yes. long did you write it? Mm -hmm. I wrote it three years ago, and uh, I felt that it needed to be produced instantly, otherwise it'd be like outdated instantly. And it was not produced instantly. I had to wait for the money. <coughs> you know, in Canada we apply and we get yes and no's and I had half the money and then I had to wait another half year for the, the rest of the money and then I had to wait for the autumn, the, for, for the fall because it's season, because I cannot have a coat check in the summer. You know, so all of that put me late shooting the film and I was desperate because I felt like everything that I'd written would be really outdated. And what what could I do? I mean, we just went along and tried to, you know, fix the, the things that I had written. But things that were a bit of a fantasy at the time became more and more ordinary. Like the iPhone became like so, you know, everywhere that things that would have been, been a little bit like far-fetched at the time, like the GPS thing became like really basic. And so it helped me in some ways. And, and the, 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 also the, the other thing is I was rewarded by reality that came like back at me because what I wrote three years ago was just a pure fantasy. Of course, people were gathering through uh, social media, but for flash mobs and, and mm -hmm. trivial stuff. And, and suddenly, the day that we sh decided to shoot uh, the big you know, gathering in the, in the port was the very same day that Occupy Montreal mm -hmm. decided to be at the exact, exact same place where our buses were to get our extras <laughs> to drive them. So we were like, who are the real ones and who are the fake ones? <laughs> And, and it kept on and on, and the student movement just, you know, uh, uh, lifted in, 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 in Quebec, and it became like, you know, wow, uh, it became as if I had written the film the minute before, and people would say, like, I was, like, 
you know, taking profit of it, but it was just like some kind of reward. Yes. Now that you've done an expose on the e-waste industry yes. in Quebec, how about a comedy on the Quebec construction industry? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was there three years ago. We, we all knew, but... It, it, Try 40 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's always existed. The mafia has been there for a while. I, I bet it exists here too, but, oh, cool. you know, yes. It, well, it, it would be a good uh, musical. So <laughs> and congratulations for getting the Port of Montreal to cooperate with you. They did was not. That, was that easy? <laughs> you bet. <laughs> like for months we were trying to try to convince them to get us, you know, inside. And, yeah. and uh, actually our guys worked for months in advance just on that. And we nearly got inside. And the week before the official visit with the crew, they said, uh, no way, you're not getting in, and uh, it's a border, so it's really difficult. And uh, we learned uh, many things from, you know, political stuff and who is in charge and who has the power of that. And even trying to get insiders to help us, they finally said, okay, you can get in with 15 people. Mm. And I said, well, I need 5,000, and I can't complete. So we ended up going to the other port, which I didn't want to go because I felt it was too cute and too, you know, uh, small. Which one was that? The one closer to the city, not the big one, oh. dirty at, in the east. And, but what I did is I, we shot in that more private mafia, <laughs> mafia-oriented port that we could pay to get in, in, in closer to Montreal. <laughs> Uh, but all the other uh, shots I did just on the edge, uh, uh, at the entrance, but not in the actual, you know, you fooled ground. Me. <laughs> yes, I, we used like many tricks. It, it's a mixture of three, four locations to build a single location. That's terrific. Yes. Uh, two questions. Um, the actor who played Casanova, <laughs> I was looking for him on the credits and I couldn't find him. What is his name? Uh, Tony Conti. Okay. Why? How about <laughs> he, he looks so familiar to me. Uh -huh. uh, no, because the story is in, is in jail right now. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know at the time. I thought, I thought it was an old story that he, he had been uh, convicted for drug dealing and, and he was trying to get back at acting. He's a good actor and I, th I thought it was finished. I mean, I, I thought it was like free of that. It's an old story that happened like five years ago, I, I believed. So I hired him because he was the best actor for the part. Before <laughs> such a day, because he was going to <laughs> appear in front of the court and... Wow, way better story. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because it's a very, you know, sensitive subject and people have avoided it. <laughs> and here I am in Vancouver, someone asked me the question. <laughs> my, my second question um, uh, refers to the style of the, of the piece. Like it really is very, it's very sweet. It's very almost old fashioned. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why you chose to go there instead of perhaps a little hipper or a little, do you know what I'm saying? A yes. little more contemporary? Well, it's a mixture of, uh, of uh, decisions. <laughs> uh, first you pick the car and then you have that scene that with the jukebox and all of a sudden it looks period. But the overall aesthetic of the film was not supposed to be that. It's just like a, the mixture of them all finally does that, you know? I, I don't know if you follow what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. When we did the, uh, the test of, of the, the overall look of the film, we agreed on colors, uh, costumes, uh, textures, and, but everyone went away in their department and worked like too much on, everyone like got very excited with like the colors and the the you know the costumes and everything, so in the end it maybe is too much. You know, it, it's like you get the result and and you feel like maybe it went 
well, it went that way. And it, it, you know, if I had to do it again, maybe, you know, if I had planned it more in advance, I would have maybe put no, a little break no. on it. And no. It's just like, I also felt like the, what's being vintage is very contemporary at the moment. That's what I felt. Yeah. Like people like are very excited, young people are very excited with the fake Polaroids and Instagram and, and, and there's some kind of nostalgia to the stuff that they haven't known. And I wanted to like put that contradiction on, on, on a physical way, you know, in an aesthetic way. Great. Well, I, I don't know. I, I'm still debating with myself if it was a, if it was a good choice or not. Oh, <laughs> okay, it's a good choice. <laughs> I, I love the Fiat, and when it got turned upside down, I was like, oh my god, that is such a beautiful car. <laughs> yes, that's the point. <laughs> the, the more beautiful it is, the, you know, it needs to be like a character that you'll feel sorry for. <laughs> yes. How do you feel personally about social media? Do you Twitter and Facebook? And, um... I am uh, I am polarized. I hate it and I use it and I this is a reflection of my own thing, you know. I I don't I've been on the internet before internet existed. Like I remember dearly my first eight hundred dollar account for you know chatting all night on the billboards and stuff like that because I was really excited. Wow, I can chat with someone from Poland uh, all night long, and my my bill will come and I'll be uh, out of food for a month. Uh, but the social media is something that is not. I was not born with, and I, I saw it evolve, and, and as I am some kind of extrovert, extrovert, uh, extrovert, yeah. extrovert uh, timid, you know, makes me like, I want to look at it, but I cannot like really subscribe to it to entirely. I cannot think of putting my own face on Facebook, and but I go check it every, Every two hours. <laughs> I, I wanted, wanted to ask, um, do you think that incorporating social media will become an important part of your, your writing from now on? Because it worked so well in this film, and I have heard of writers now that actually want to incorporate it as part of the storytelling medium because it's just so part of our culture. I don't think I, I want to use it again, or well, not not as big as that. Uh, of course, it's it's impossible to write a contemporary piece now and not use cell phones and, and not use that kind of, of, of tools. But this was really about it, with the with the help of it and around it and the the good and bads of it. So, but I think I pretty much made my point and I want to go on to something else now uh, yeah. I and it's 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 kind of boring to, to shoot screens and and you know it's not very sexy. I was just saying I I had heard that the we had a trade forum that preceded the uh, film festival and the, one of the lead writers from The Good Wife, one of the writing roles in the story room is, is that they have to incorporate mm. media as part of the storytelling <coughs> process. And I was just wondering if, mm. if that's something that you and other writers are... Not really. No. 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 I know that, they, of course, the Telefilm and so they all want you to you know, do your advertisement for no, no money with the social media. Like, let's do that. Let's do that. And, but it's, like it's not something that you can control. Uh, creating a viral thing is not something that you can create, even though some people tend to think it's something magical that happens and you cannot like really, uh... well, enough talking about that. That's boring. <laughs> yes? Uh, this is gonna bug me if I don't ask it. Did, were you sitting in the um, jukebox scene? There was an extra in there that, that from where I'm sitting, looked a lot like you. 
in the jukebox scene. No, I, I, I must say, I was in, I was in the film, uh, outside, like, getting over the bridge. Yes, yes. But, and all my friends, and all my family, and all the, you know, hairdressers, gym coaches, everyone had to be recruited for the film, because I didn't have, obviously, the money to pay everyone, so a lot of love money was involved in, in the film. And, but no, no, I was not there. Not at that scene. Thank you, I can sleep now. <laughs> Your guess. <laughs> Very hard to say. Yeah. How much? Yeah, much. I mean, it could be done with five hundred dollars. I mean, if you have like people working for free uh, in the Canadian conditions, paying everyone as it needs to be. Uh, uh, Forty-three days of shooting. Uh, the big, uh, big crew and cast. A lot of extras. A lot of locations. It costs. It should have cost five point something millions, and we got five point something millions, which is why all my family and friends had to come and help <laughs> because we, we 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 lacked one million to do the film. But it's a typical Canadian medium budget. Are you showing it at other festivals? Well, I've, I've, we've just released it and and so it's difficult to get uh, like a world premiere when that is uh, uh, mandatory for uh, you know going to uh, festivals we, we were in toronto and we're here we're going to france and, and london and, oh, france. and but yeah yes when is it going to open in english canada i don't know Check on Facebook. <laughs> Liverpool Le Film. I, I guess my, my distributor will will release the information. I I I don't know yet at the at the moment. Yes. This is where I often encourage audiences to vote for the Rogers favorite award, the uh, audience favorite, because it talks to distributors if they know that there is going to be a pre-demand for it, um, and if you want your friends to see it contact the distributor and say we want this film back in Vancouver because it's really hard for us to get a lot of Quebecois films here. So exercise your voting power. Yes. Roger's most popular audience favorite award. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, the voice of the girl is really particular, like uh, très candide. Yes. Was it meant to be? Did you take her in focus with the music? I tried to strangle her and punch her to try to get another <laughs> voice. No, she, she, she has that voice. She, it's very, yes. Sweet and interesting. Yeah, she's a singer yeah. in Quebec, very famous. So I, I'd like to debate with the editor, what, that, what do we do with that? Because the, the opening of her face at, after five minutes. Uh, and then the voice was a problem because for most people who don't know her, yeah, they would think it's a child talking. So we had to come, kind of re-edit, thinking about the Quebec audience who knows that it's her talking, because they know that it's her acting in the film, so they, they don't question it. And all the other, uh, the rest of the world who don't know that Stephanie has that voice, so we showed her more, showing her hands, her back. And so that was, a, yeah, that was a point that we needed to re rework. And, uh, because of that. But with the music and all, is it like... It was a nightmare for, yes. for mixing the music because the voice is so tiny and we had that big loud music. Yeah. And even the music, like, uh, the music... Okay, je veux dire en français, je oui. <laughs> and then the music has an atmosphere very candid and very particular. Is it made exactly that the film has an atmosphere a bit like a dream of a dream, a dream of a dream, but something else? Uh, no, that was well, that was something else. The music, the music, the romantic music that happens when both of them. It was some kind of a decision that we made, the editor and I, through editing. We tested a lot of kind of guide scores, and and we we liked this one because it it felt it felt good. We just liked it, and and and, and it became the uh, the guide for the actual composer to to copy or be inspired by his. When you look back on the making of the movie, what was one of the most uh, 
challenging moments, a frustrating moments that stand out? And what was one of the one of the most wonderful moments that stand out for you? Um, most difficult is obviously to get like the thousands of people of inside the, the the port and and knowing that they'll be there. And, you know, you know, you're not being there. You're trying to for for weeks in advance. You're trying to gather the people, but since you're not paying them, you just hope they'll show up. But it's a difficult place to, to, to go to. It's not comfortable. There's no cafe around. They're, they'll have nothing to do during the day. It, it's going to be boring for them. And so we were really praying that they show up. And they did. But it was difficult. And, and, and also the, the whole thing with the snake. I wrote that a snake was everywhere in the city. And then just prior to the shooting, I learned Ikinat put the snake outside because it's, he's going to die. Because <laughs> it needs to be 35 degrees, otherwise the snake is going to die. Oh my. So all the scenes that had to be rethought because uh, it was supposed to be everywhere in the street. And obviously, we didn't have the money. We, we planned on shooting in the studio and redoing you know, small uh, decor to and as the film went on, we we went over budget, and that fell. And, and the only scene where the snake is actually outside, we had to hide big uh, heaters behind the, the van to create like a small area where we could put the snake, uh, remove the snake, like put it outside for 10 seconds, it, it, it'd be grabbed and, and walk from there to there because the heater were like, it was like 30 degrees in that small area and the rest of the, you know, the location was 10 degrees. <laughs> yes. I just want to get back to Stephanie Lapointe. Uh, yes. She's from so I know Stephanie Lapointe as a singer and I was really curious to see how she would be doing on screen, because if I understand correctly, was that her first role? No, I she she has acted in a, a TV series and a couple of films were not like the first, like the big part. The main actor. Mm -hmm. actor. Okay. And how did you, uh, did you already have in mind this kind of uh, delicate type of personality? Uh, mm, I didn't have a physical Apart from the fact that I hope it would fit with a green coat, because I had written a green coat. <laughs> so I was like hoping so a girl with a red hair, but, <laughs> but I, was, I, I did like casting sessions for it two years prior to that and trying to find the right girl and then trying to find the right boy. And in the end, it's really the match of them two that made me choose those two. And Stephanie existed, like, get, got the part because Charles Alexandre was there to match perfectly with her. <coughs> and it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't fit with any other girl either because the two of them are so tiny. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's, a, it's unbelievable how tiny they are. They're only, the only one that could fit in that car. Because <laughs> we, we tried to get the camera inside, it's impossible. Even the sound person, like their head were going like outside the, through the roof. But yeah, uh, so and it's really the, the match of, of the two of them that really uh, elected them as the best couple. Yes? Um, I just really have so much of a question. I just really want to comment that um, uh, being a young guy, I loved all the, uh, the little bells and whistles of the technology that you had, you know, people getting their text messages or when he's setting off like hundreds of emails. Um, you know, I, you know, I kind of hate to admit it, but those sounds are really iconic for me and my generation. Mm -hmm. And I, I really enjoyed how it, you know, seamlessly went through uh, the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yes. I well, thank you, and that's what that's what I hope the most. And that's what the distributor hoped the most. So that's why he released the film during the summer because he says that the young crowd is gonna love this. And then they decided that in March and in, in August, the young crowd has, had become very angry and, and, and was not in the mood to go. And see a film. time in Quebec too.
I'm sorry? August election time. Yes, election time in the Olympics and yeah. and, and, and all, of, all of that. But but the, the yeah, the young people seem to really enjoy it and I'm really glad about it. Yes. Um, the composer, the great work, what's that? I didn't hear the his name is Ramachandra Borka. You can also call him Ram, which is more convenient. Yes, he's very good. Actually, it's funny because I hired him because he's very famous for being privately a DJ and he's very good with, with loud, like very uh, beaty music and, and, and really rich. And then as we start, so I hired him thinking he would like do great with all the score in, in the bar. And as we started editing and putting guide music, I didn't think I'd have score, like underscore throughout the film. I thought there would be only the song. And so we started to put guide tracks and we enjoyed ourselves putting more and more and more. And in the end, like we ended up not having time to do any bar song, any bar music. He just did the score. He couldn't do anything that I hired him for. <laughs> I wanted to ask um, the gentleman who asked the question about the most difficult mm. and what was it the the, the happiest the, or the, the most wonderful moment? The most wonderful. Yeah. Maybe you could answer that. Oh, frankly, if I'm being frank, the most wonderful moments when we, when was when we ended the shooting. <laughs> <laughs> it was so difficult. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was not easy this one. Because uh, because of the lack of money, we had to run all the time. It was very frustrating, and it was we were racing against the the weather, the light, the we were working in the hard, harsh environments, and and, and so yeah, there were a few good moments, but <laughs> basically it was difficult. <laughs> yeah. Well, if there are no more questions, I. Again, I want to say on behalf of the audience, thank you for bringing us a wonderful Thank you. Thank you so much.